Most of our equipment at home, they can be power on by using an on off switch to put them into the standby mode or into the active mode. The standby mode is when the equipment is sleeping or in deep sleep mode when we are not using it. The active mode is actually when we are using the equipment. Just like uh, we are watching our TV, we are using our rice cooker to cook our food, and also we are using our amplifier to listen to our favorite music. These modes of operation of our equipment at home will follow the modes of operation of our project uh, Amduino. Power on and power off, uh, standby mode or active mode. <music> Hi, my name is Ferdinand and my friends call me Dandy, the host of this stuff channel. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the modes of operation of the Amduino project, the standby mode and active mode with the application of software programming. In the last video, episode 2, I described the ins and out of the A3CS shield, the circuit design specific to the power management as this shield can be put into the standby mode and active mode and save power in the standby mode by power down all circuits or sensors that is not in use. Let's see once more of the transistor Q1 which use as a switch to distribute the plus 5 volt to the selected hardware like the DHT11 the LCD, relays, and other circuit that is not needed in the standby mode. To enable this hardware, it requires software control via one of the 80MB328P I.O. like the Arduino pin 7. Sending a logic zero makes Q1 distribute the plus 5 BDC in the active mode and sending a logic one makes Q1 act like an open switch and remove the plus 5 BDC from the circuits. This makes a good protocol for saving power in the standby mode. But the question is, how are we going to put the system into the active mode and standby mode? Well, switch to the rescue. Like our appliances at home, they have switch to power on and power off. So we will going to do the same to our project. And in my case, I am using a switch with an onboard LED, a neighbor switch that when you press it, it will turn on the LED. Isn't it that beautiful to look at? Again, this is controlled by simple hardware and driven by program. Let's take a look at it. Let's see the switch, the SW1, which is interface into the Arduino pin 7. This is an input as it will inform the 80 mega 328p of the logic level change of the switch. This is an active logic zero because the switch is normally open. The LED is controlled by pin 13. This is an output as it used to control the LED on and off. This connection is called current source as it requires logic one to make the LED lighted. Interfacing devices to the MCU can be current sync or current source and the logic label may be different to make the device active. Again, in our case, our LED is logic one active, that is sending a logic one makes the LED to light. What I would like to discuss further with respect to managing a switch is the phenomenon which is often called debounce. Many new hardware starters, DIYers or maker don't know much about it. If you are watching my project, OFW Profile Learning, I described in episode 4 in pure Filipino language 
that is Tagalog about switch the bounds with the Intel 851 microcontroller. This will be the same phenomenon for any switch like the switch I have now. Let's see that. When someone presses a switch, the switch contact will execute a series of open and close in a very short period of time until it rests into its final state. That very short period of time is being accounted by the microcontroller as a series of on and off which may cause a false trigger. You can imagine a basketball ball bouncing on the court until it rests on the ground. If this phenomenon cannot be accounted by software, it will give the user a false trigger which is not desirable. So take note of this phenomenon. Alright guys, meron tayong progress. May kalaman na tayo tungkol sa switch at paano interface ang LED. Let's continue and let's see the programming on the Arduino sketch. Here is my simple personal defined programming art on the Arduino sketch. Let me just mention it here. The first part is mentioning of the project and its description if there is something the reader would like to know in the first place. The next is self-definition like uh, putting an alias of the MCUIO port, uh, naming them so that uh, it is easy to read or understood by someone who will read the program instead of just simply using 7 or 8 which is uh, designated for the IO pin number. You may define it to be LED power on or power on off switch is uh, something like that. The setup is a standard Arduino requirements where you define the IO, define the pins as input or output, the initial setting and other program that needs to be defined before it can be used in the main program. The subroutine comes next, which is our subprogram that can be broken down instead of putting all in the main program. Such subroutines are those that are common to other program and they are called when it is needed. The main program is a standard Arduino SQS requirements, which is an endless loop. This is where the main logic of the program will flow. And lastly, I added further information about the program or link where to get further information. I also use this part to thanks other people who may contributed in the libraries that I'm using as, um, frankly speaking, almost all the libraries I'm using now are copy and paste. It is not my work and uh, I have to thank them for sharing and free to use in this tutorial. To simplify the discussion here, I put the program into my personal website, onediyshare.com. You might like to go to this personal website and download the sketch program and uh, you can see how the program was written. The next process is for absolutely beginners, for DIYers or makers who is just starting the Arduino. Let's download the program into the Arduino Uno with the A3CS shield. You can do that by clicking the download button on the sketch and then see the program on the download bar. You can also see the two LEDs and the A3CS shield will sometimes blink when the PC and the Arduino starts to communicate. These LEDs are connected to the TX and RX of the UARD port of the Arduino Uno. This is the communication port between the Arduino and the PC running the sketch. Now, after downloading, let's do a functional check. Press the button momentarily or about one second. The LED should light. Press once again, the LED should turn off. Press once to go to the active mode. Press once again to go to the standby mode. Again and again and again. 
By doing a more critical test, you will find it that there is a problem when the user will keep pressing the push button switch. What happened here is that the LED tend to blink, which means the system will keep power on, power off, going to the active mode, going to the standby mode in a repeatable manner. So this is not good. This is not desirable. To solve this issue, I will need to put a decision making inside the program that will detect the user if and only if he will release the switch and then continue the program flow. That is, if the user keep pressing the key, the program will not move at all. Instead, it will watch out when the user will release the key and continue the program flow. Well, uh, it works, right? So uh, this is just one possible solution to make the on-off active mode and standby mode in a proper execution for the project. There are other ways to make it better and simple code. I hope you can develop and if you do so, please share to me and to the rest of our Arduino friends. Maraming salamat po. The final task of this episode is to enable Q1, which is the transistor act like a switch to distribute the plus 5 volts to the rest of the circuit. When I'm doing the program, I do it one by one, not at a time. I do this because it is easier for me to isolate or locate the problem, like the switch we just talked about. This is the program that I added into the active mode and also in the standby mode to enable or disable the hardware. The easiest way for me to test it is by using a voltmeter or the best part of it is to make use of the SMI NextGen LCD. By the way, the NextGen SMI or the Human Machine Interface LCD, I programmed it earlier to put my picture in there and also a man machine interface and next time I'm going to show to you how I did it. It's not a part of this video because it's a little bit long how to handle the programming for the next gen LCD. The next video I'm going to demonstrate how to use the 20 by 4 LCD or maybe the OLED LCD as well as the next gen HMI or the Human Machine Interface LCD. Watch it out guys and don't miss it. Stay tuned! Hey guys, it's Ferdinand Dandy once again and thank you very much for watching my video. If you like my videos, you may like to subscribe it so you will get a notification whenever I posted a new video about the Arduino project. Bye for now and see you in the next video.